What is up everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, like you guys read in the title, we're going to be talking about and breaking down the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here in the fourth week, heading into the fourth week of July in 2019. And I'm also going to be breaking down a couple of stocks and ETFs that you guys actually ended up calling out on Friday's video in the comments section or in the Discord group chat in the call out section. So if you did end up calling out a stock, I do appreciate it. I'm going to be covering it in today's video. And if you find value in this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you do want to see further content from me. Join our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Strive Smart Facebook group. Both of those communities are 100% free. Everything is linked down below. And without further ado, guys, let's just talk about the S&P 500 very quickly. What ended up happening this past week? A quick little recap in under two, three minutes here so you guys can get a better understanding of what the overall market is is looking like right now in terms of the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. So take a look here, guys, on the five-day, five-minute. You can see the S&P 500 hit an all-time high at about $3,017 on the 15th of July. We fell on the 16th, we fell on the 17th, and we actually hit a low at 29.73 on the 18th of July before popping up and then ultimately dropping again this past Friday, which was on the 19th of July. And if we take a look on some longer time frame charts here, starting out with the 20 day, one hour, you guys can see the potential start of a head and shoulders pattern here. We actually talked about this. I talked about this um, in the previous video on Friday, I believe. And you guys can see the left shoulder. We popped up to that all-time high at 3,017. We had the aggressive sell-off forming the head of the pattern. The pop-up, the retest, the look to break out and potentially hit all-time highs again. But we failed to do so because we got rejected by that 50 SMA. And then we we ultimately dumped forming that right shoulder. So you guys can see if this pattern completes itself at this point, you know, we're going to be dumping below the 2975 level, which is a critical support and this 180 SMA here, which is an, also a critical support on the 20 day one hour. And we would do something like this. And that would be the completion of the pattern. And at that point, you know, we, we might be trading at 2900, 2800, who knows guys. And that is if this pattern completes. Let's say we pop above here. Let's say we break out of that 50 SMA. You know, that's going to be a completely different story from there. We might be pushing to all time highs again, but I'm saying if we break this, we start to break, you know, we could be dumping even further from there. And if we take a look at the 184 hour very quickly to take a look at and identify some supports for this upcoming week on the S&P 500, you guys can clearly see 29.75 is very, very important important, a very, very critical support here on the S&P. You can see it's above the 50 SMA at 2975, which has been a support over the past couple of weeks, as you guys can see. And 2975 happens to be a resistance from a couple of weeks ago in the beginning of July, um, before we broke out of that resistance, holding it as a new support, and then popping to those all-time highs. So the fact that we're trading above that old resistance, it's a new support right now. So that is another support that we're holding above um, at this point in time. Just know that the 2975 level in general, if we break it, we might be going to 2950 next. And after that, if we break that, we may be going down to 2900 flat, which would put us on top of um, this 180 SMA and so forth, guys. There's a bunch of other supports um, below this level. But 2975 is super, super critical. One to just keep an eye out for for this entire week. So that is just, just the brief market update in two, three minutes of what ended up happening this past week and some supports, resistances that I'm looking at right now and you know some levels that I'm just very, very closely watching for this upcoming week, guys. So without further ado, let's just hop right into it. What am I looking at in terms of stocks and ETFs and some that you guys actually ended up calling out? So 
as you guys saw, the markets are falling, right? The NASDAQ actually fell very aggressively as well this past Friday, and that brought down a lot of tech. So tech right now is on a bit of a sale if the markets do end up recovering here and testing all-time highs. If this does end up being a dip in the overall markets like the NQ, the SPX, let's say we recover and pop, there's going to be a lot of opportunity in tech stocks, including Amazon, right? A-M-Z-N. And that is if the markets do recover. Who knows? If the markets continue to dump, like I personally think there's a good chance that that, that happens, you know, Amazon might be dumping as well. But in, ter in terms of Amazon right now, you guys can see that it's holding that 1950 level, which was an old resistance back from the May and April months of 2019. You guys can see we saw a bit of a double top there. We pulled back in that May or rather we had that May um, month of correction here in the markets. You saw Amazon took a hit from 1950 down to about 1700. And from there, we recovered. We broke out of 1950. We broke out of that resistance, making it a new support. And then we hit that all-time high or rather that high on the time frame here at 2035, which is actually 15 points below the all-time high from about a year ago at 2050. So now that we are testing that spot, as a support again, this is very critical, guys, because if we hold this and then on a smaller time frame on the 20-day, let's say we hold this 1950 level, we break out of this 50 SMA, we may be gunning for that 2035 spot and maybe all-time highs again. But one thing that I'm noticing here, guys, is the potential bearish cross that's about to happen with the 50 SMA, this green line that's about to cross below the 180 SMA. That could signal more sell-off, um, you know, in a particular stock, ETF, future, index, whatever we're analyzing. But in this case, it's obviously Amazon. So if that cross does end up happening and we break below 1950, I'm not really looking to trade Amazon. Amazon at that point. But the whole idea here, let's say if this is a double bottom, we break up, we break that 50 SMA. At that point, we're confirming the bounce at 1950, which again is a very critical support. And we may be filling the gap up to 2035 at that point, and maybe even past that to potentially test the all time highs. And at that point, at this point, that's what I'm watching for on Amazon, guys, really just to hold 1950 and to fill the gap back up to 2035. I think that could be a very good play if the markets do end up bouncing back because again, Amazon, one of the biggest companies out there, it heavily fluctuates the market when this drops and obviously when the markets drop, Amazon's most likely dropping as well as a lot of these other large companies like, you know, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, and the list goes on, right? So let's talk about DPZ, which is another one that I actually called out a couple of days ago and somebody in the comment section actually wanted me to follow up with DPZ because it actually did end up breaking a very good point here, which I actually talked about in the previous couple of videos. Now it's looking like it's filling up to the next gap guys and let me explain what I'm talking about here on the 184 hour chart very quickly you guys can see a strong support on DPZ at around $245 notice how we held that back in December we held it back in March and now after we got that big dump I'm assuming this was after earnings we got a dump from about 282 all the way down to 245 we held that spot yet again we popped up and we we actually tested another resistance here, and I do believe I talked about this in the previous video, and you guys can notice why this is a resistance. It's, it's a resistance because back in January, literally on the second day, and pretty much the whole first half of January in 2019, we were struggling to break out of 250, but the fact that we actually broke out of 250 now, we held it as a new support, and now we're breaking up into the mid 250s and high 250s, looking to get into 260, that's a very good sign, in my opinion, for a continuation move here in DPZ. And you can also see, you know, it's breaking out of the uh, the EMA line, this light blue line here. This is looking pretty good. But now, just to follow up with it, let's draw some new resistances that I'm currently seeing right now on um, dominoes. And honestly, this might be better if we go to the one year, one day. You might see it a bit clearer. So 
take a look here guys actually where we are right now happens to be 255 257 ish happens to be another level of resistance notice how on the 30th of july about a year ago in 2018 that was a spot of support we bounced above it um you know obviously that's making it a resistance up until right now because we are slightly peaking above it uh so now if we hold that as a new support that'd be very good you can see it was a support back in 250 uh um Back in October at 255, you can see it was a resistance back in um, March before we broke out of it. So this is a very critical spot, guys, and it does seem like we are peaking above 255 a little bit right now. So if we hold that, uh, you know, 255 as a new support, you know, this could be a spot where we might be filling the gap up to 260, right? That's another level you guys can kind of see. 260 might be the next uh, the next uh, gap we fill. And then from there, let me try and find some other ones off the top of my eye right now. Uh, 267, you know, if we break that, uh, you know, if we break 260, we might be filling the gap up to 267. But all in all, at this point, guys, the, the, the idea is that Dom, uh, Domino's DPZ is filling gap after gap and continuing its recovery from the bottoming out point at 245. And that's a very good sign that it wants to recover back up to potentially 260, 270, the previous higher levels that it was at. And just to further confirm this, on the 20-day one hour, take a look at what the pattern on Domino's is looking like. We found that bottom again, and since then, we've been making higher lows higher highs, breaking resistances every day. And you can see the pattern that it's currently on. It actually even broke out of the 50 SMA resistance. We closed above it, which is very good. So just keep an eye on Domino's to see if it's continuing this push. If we break out tomorrow, maybe above 260, that would be a very good continuation move there on Domino's. And honestly, if we pull back and retest 255, hold it, maybe that could be an entry point for the fill up to 260. That's what I'm currently watching as well so dpz that's what i'm watching guys uh fedex is another one that's in a similar situation where um recently it did end up dropping and if it would like to load that would be great Fed fedex it's not fdz that's my fault it's ft fdx not fdz i wrote it wrong on the notepad too actually which is kind of funny but anyway fdx is fedex corporation and this is one that's been clobbered over the past couple of months we've talked about this in previous videos actually but now it's finally looking like it is showing that break that we like to see for the start of a break. And what that means is it's it's breaking out of simple moving average resistances on some larger term time frames, in this case, the 184 hour chart. And notice how this yellow line, the 180 SMA, and this green line, the 50 SMA, both of these lines have been acting as resistance points. You can see it from April all the way to about May, the end of May for mid-April, the 50 SMA was a resistance. Now we broke out of it. And from that point, guys, you know, from the beginning of June, I would say, we've been actually breaking out of both of the levels. You can see we initially broke out of the 50 SMA. You know, we were ho we were holding it. And at that point, we were trying to get out of the 180 SMA, which was the next barrier. And now we actually just got out of that level. And we're actually holding these levels as new supports. Now we're actually trending above them and we're making higher lows and higher highs out of those moving averages. So that's a very good sign that the trend is beginning to reverse. And we're also starting to see a bullish cross of the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA right now in real time, guys. So at this point, you can see there's a clear resistance on FedEx. So although it's reversing out of moving averages, it does seem to have some trouble at about $170. And this is ideal. Uh, a break above this would be ideal in my eyes to enter into FedEx. And until we do break above that level, I'm really not looking to trade FedEx. But take a look at this pattern in the past couple of months that FedEx was on. It was actually trading horizontally between 170 and about $185. So I'm thinking right now, guys, if we do break, and it takes a bit of patience here to see and wait and see if it does end up breaking, but if we break, we hold 169, 170 as a new support, and then we fill the gap, I think this could be a very feasible trade here um, from about 170 up to about 185. It offers about 8%, and you guys can see we were hovering in that horizontal 
Pistol channel literally from the beginning of this year in 2019 all the way to about March when we broke out and then we dumped from there. So at this point, I'm thinking that could be a very good move um, in FDX and that's what I'm watching. We need to break the 170 spot, break 170 and then fill the gap up. I think that's very, very possible there. So let's talk about gold very quickly because I know gold has been the talk of the town guys slash gc gold futures you can see how crazy this is running and by the time this video is actually uploaded and you're watching it it's going to most likely be uh, past 6 p.m eastern standard time so you'll be actually able to see what the futures are moving like what are they opening you'll be able to see at uh you know what the s p the nasdaq the dow futures are looking like and that's going to assist you in planning your trades but for this video i wasn't able to wait till the night time to record it because i'm busy later on today but i figured just to show you guys and let you guys know that the futures are open now while you're watching so go check out what gold's looking like but ideally if the futures are open right and we're holding above 1425 1430 that is what we need to be doing for gold to continue to fill up to maybe $1,500, maybe $1,550. And I'm sure a lot of you guys watched my video when I talked about gold more in depth a couple of days ago. But at this point, if we do end up holding those levels at $1,430, $1,440, we could be filling up to the next high here at about $1,540, or rather to the next resistance, which is at $1,540, rather. Did I say $1,440? I meant $1,540. And that's about $100. 100 points higher at this point and you may be saying stash you're crazy what makes you think gold's going to go that high at this point guys again i mentioned this in a couple of videos ago we're towards the end of an economic cycle and if you guys see what ended up happening with gold last time um you know the market crashed you guys can see from 07 to 09 gold actually appreciated um quite well right and, and am i saying the market's going to crash absolutely not guys right no one knows what is going to happen really nobody knows what's going to happen right but a lot of people flock to gold towards the end of the economic cycle because it's considered a safe haven that holds its value during economic crises and maybe sometimes it even goes up in value right as you guys can see over the past 20 years you know this has actually been able to um, do quite well especially during this time period so you know maybe you know that's a reason that people think that you know, gold is going to do well. I personally think that this is just extremely bullish right now for those reasons stated. And I do think it's possible to fill up to 1540. And let's say that does end up happening. You know, JNUG, which is one that we trade a lot on the channel, I talk about a lot on the channel, which goes up whenever gold is going up. You know, this is going to be a very good ETF to play. And you guys can see how crazy it's been going now that gold has been reversing so heavily and just running up. Uh, um, you know, in price being extremely bullish after it was a bit bearish for a couple of months. And I know I know a lot of you guys know what I'm referring to, right? Gold went through a point where, you know, during this time period, you know, in the beginning of the year, all the way up to May for about five, six months, gold was just dropping. You know, the downtrend was there. And this breakout that we're seeing, it just continues to lead me to believe um, that we're going to see more bullish, uh, you know, more bullish sentiment in gold to be completely honest with you guys. So let's take a look very quickly at some other ones. NVIDIA, NVDA. NVIDIA at this point is one that just based off some uh, brief analysis, if we just take out my uh, support resistance tool very quickly, you guys can see if I draw this one out, then if I just extend this one, NVIDIA is just in this very small little channel right now. You can see we're trading between 168 and about $173. Notice how we popped to about 173. We pulled back from there and we actually held a higher low from the 
previous at about a hundred. Um, let me guess, uh, one hundred and fifty-five dollars. You guys can see that we held the trend very nicely. We broke out, and we actually failed to break out of one seventy-three. We broke out of the initial resistance at about one sixty-eight. We tried to break out of one seventy-three, but we failed. We pulled back, and now we're just holding that same support at around one hundred and sixty-eight dollars. So at this point, Nvidia might pull back and retest that 50 SMA, which has been a support over the past couple of weeks. And at that point, it might be at about $165. And at that point, it'll also retest this trend line that I just drew for you guys. And that could open up a pretty interesting entry point from 165 up to, let's say, 173. That's about a four or five percent profit margin on NVIDIA. And let's say, you know, it's going to continue the uptrend. We need to break out of 173. For that to happen, there could be even more potential on NVIDIA, upwards of 10% there. If we just take a look at some previous resistances, and honestly, guys, the next resistance at that point would be around, I'd say, maybe 175, 177, 180. And if you do the math, you know, that's a pretty good margin of profit there on NVIDIA. And that's looking pretty good, guys, in my opinion. We just need to pick a direction. Are we pulling back? Are we going to break? out, um, you know, that's going to heavy, heavily uh, influence my decisions for NVIDIA. So MU is another one been running up like crazy recently. We just popped to a 46 higher high at this point. And the fact that MU is up 30%, 28, 30% is in the matter of like a month, guys. That is unbelievable. If you guys know, uh, and if you've been following me for a while, I've actually been holding MU in my long-term portfolio now for about like a year or two, and my average is actually quite high. It's at about like 54, I forget to be honest with you guys, but it's in the mid-50s. It's like 54, 53, 55 or something, and I was pretty much almost half on my position at that point. At $32, I've lost almost half. At this point, I did lose almost half. I was down 50%, and remember, this is a long-term position, and the fact that we we are up 30%. That just gives me a lot of, uh, you know, it, it, it feels good to be honest, guys, because I was down again, like 40%. So I've recovered like 30, uh, like 20, 30% of my position in the past month. I'm cool with that, right? And I'm sure a lot of you guys would be as well. But on a short term perspective now, you know, again, I'm long Micron. This is a long, long term investment. But on a short term perspective here, we popped to a high at $46. You know, we may be pulling back down at this point to retest that 50 SMA. Notice this very bullish, extremely bullish pattern that we've been having. We run up for five, four or five days, and then we plateau for two, three days before popping to the next level. And you guys can see we plateaued for two, three days. We popped up for a day or two. Who knows? We, we may run up one more day before seeing that pullback. But all I'm saying at this point is, you know, momentum might run us up maybe to 47 but ultimately, I would like to see a pullback and a retest on that green SMA here on the 184-hour chart, that 50 SMA for Micron. So that's what I'm looking there. And Tesla, guys, TSLA... This is actually one that's reporting earnings on the 24th of July. So Tesla is one that at this point, there's some, a lot of actually positive sentiment around it, right? You all know about the production numbers that came out. They shocked Wall Street. The stock went up like crazy, right? And since, since then, honestly, it's just been continuing to run up in price. So if their earnings, guys, if they somehow, I don't know what the forecast is for the earnings. I haven't done too much research into it, but if they somehow pull a profit again i don't know what the forecast is this might not even happen at all but if they pull a profit guys at this point you know tesla could definitely be running up another five ten percent on that news because we know at this point tesla is heavily you know affected by these these news articles that come out in the media and their earnings and stuff like that they're very very sensitive to negative news and positive news so anything can move the stock up guys and i'm watching to see what ends up happening let's say we pull back we retest that 50 sma that could be a good entry point but me personally i'm sure a lot of you guys know this already i wait till after earnings before entering positions but um you know tesla here this could be a post earnings 
earnings play depending on how things end up going down. So that are you know, those are the uh, couple that I do have listed here on my notepad. Of course, I'm watching the market ETFs like I do every single week, guys. This is not news to people that have been watching. Of course, if you're new, this is news to you. And let me explain it to you very quickly. So market ETFs, these are the bunch that I watch. And these are pretty much uh, you know, focusing on just market direction on the major markets. And this is the SPX and the NASDAQ. These are the ones I personally track. And the ones for the S&P 500 are SPXS, which goes up whenever the S&P 500 is selling off. So if I think the markets are going to sell off, this could be one that I'm, I'm looking to trade, right? SPXS. And this is a 3x leveraged ETF, meaning if the market's you know, go down 1%. Let's say the S&P 500 goes down 1%. This one's going to go up 3%, right? That's what that means. And the inverse to it is SPXL. Let's say I think the markets are going to go up. I trade this and this goes up 3x what the market in the, uh, the S&P 500 in specific is going up. So if the S&P goes up 1%, this one's going up 3%. And then of course, SQQQ and TQQQ, those are the, it's the exact same, um, uh, the exact same ETF uh, theory behind it, you know, it trades on the market, but it trades on the NASDAQ. So if the NASDAQ is going up 1%, TQQQ is up 3%. And if the NASDAQ goes down 1%, SQQQ is up 3%, right? So those are ones that I'm watching on markets, um, you know, specific markets, the S&P and the NASDAQ. I'm watching some velocity or yeah, velocity volatility ETFs, TVIX in particular. This one trades, it does really well when there's a lot of volatility in the markets, when the VIX, the volatility index is going up right? And when the markets are generally dumping. So those are just a couple that I'm watching this upcoming week, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Let me know in the comments section, what are you watching? I would love to know. What are your thoughts on the markets? Where are we going? Are we getting this rate cut in the next week and a half? Is this going to dump the markets? Are we going to hit all-time highs again? Are the best days behind us? I would love to know what you guys have to think. I love interacting with you all. And uh, that's pretty much it, right? You know, subscribe, like, comment, you know, all the all the good stuff, guys. Down below in the description box, the Strive Smart Discord, the Strive Smart Facebook, my Instagram, Twitter, everything's linked down below if you want to be a part of it. Well, and uh, that's pretty much it. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Have a great rest of your weekend. Peace out, guys.